big fat vein of iron oxide. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kemp. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone. Welcome back. And in today's episode, I will be presenting my hypothesis on the function of the Great Pyramid Iron Core. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And just a quick announcement, I just dropped an absolutely massive video for members only episode 20, a full expose on the legend of monoatomic gold. So if you want to help support the channel and get access to this type of exclusive research, please consider a subscription link in the video description below. Now to begin, here's a diagram showing the conventionally accepted level of the bedrock below the Great Pyramid of Giza. With the archaeological investigations of the well shaft revealing a transition from the bedrock of the subterranean system into the limestone masonry of the upper pyramid directly above a feature known as the grotto that you can see here. And all of the diagrams and original source depictions of the Great Pyramid show relatively the same thing. A small mound of bedrock that stops just above the grotto with the rest of the pyramid core being constructed of limestone masonry blocks. And for me, these depictions and this explanation never really resonated as being completely accurate, as none of them address all of this space over here, which no one has ever been able to investigate as there is absolutely no way to access this portion of the core structure. The only accessible portion of this section is the interior of the well shaft. And to me, at least intuitively, I always believe that the core bedrock below the Great Pyramid, the Ben Ben, the primordial mound upon which the pyramids are known to have been built, would have been much more something like this. A larger mound or hill that served as a seat for both the King's Chamber and the Queen's Chamber with both of these components constructed directly on top of this bedrock mound of the Giza Plateau. And in an extensive series here on the channel, I have proven that the bedrock core of both the Great Pyramid and the Central Pyramid are permeated with iron and metallic ore mineral deposits. And I just created a new playlist entitled Giza Iron Veins, featuring this series of five episodes that present exclusive documentation revealing this network of iron and metal mineral veins stretching across the Giza Plateau. The source of which emanates from the bedrock core of the Great and Central Pyramids and connects various components of the Giza Plateau industrial mining and chemical manufacturing operation. And I have personally mapped this entire system of electrically conductive metal mineral veins that are shown here as fully documented in the Giza Iron Vein playlist and in episode 132. The function of the Giza Plateau Iron Veins. I explained how the Giza Plateau was intentionally selected for the construction of this pyramid complex to implement these naturally occurring hydrothermal mineral deposits into the operation of the system, utilizing them to distribute electric current from lightning across the components of the Giza Plateau complex. And I'll put in a few clips now so you can see it for yourself that both the bedrock core of the Great Pyramid and the bedrock core of the Central Pyramid are both permeated with iron and metal ore mineral veins, a Land of Chem exclusive discovery. Check this out. Iron oxide. Should I know? 
Four of the Great Pyramid. Do we have to go on our bellies? Nope. Oh, tight squeeze. Big fat vein of iron oxide. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are inside the central pyramid of Giza. And we are at the convergence of the upper inlet shaft and the lower inlet shaft. So from the outside of this structure, there are two openings that would have led from the reservoir delivering water into the internal system. And what Yusuf is looking at here is the deposit of iron oxide that we discovered in the core of the structure. So this means the flashlight. Yeah. So this is your upper inlet. And there's actually a space between this block and the one behind it. There's an opening. And if you look, get closer to oh. where, where I'm looking. Let's see if we can get a good angle. Oh, perfect. That's the money shot. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The first video documentation of the iron oxide <laughs> deposits located in the core of the central pyramid. Stay tuned for more. Yep. From yep. this corner. Yep. Into the other corner. Yep. So you see here what we're looking at, this patch? Yeah, yeah. It goes all the way down here. And this has been covered with modern concrete. And this is a stream of iron oxide that once ran all the way into the chamber and towards and it dipped down here. Oh, there's the patch going up the wall. And this is a, a new discovery. I just noticed this. And I pointed out to Yusuf and he's like, oh, that's modern concrete. I was like, oh, there's iron in there. But the modern concrete is over there. Yeah. Iron. Yeah, and you can see it. There's another good spot on the wall. It's iron oxide. Right here. Yep. So this is very similar to what we just saw down in the Osiris shaft, where they were- a layer on top of the ancient layer. And they were tapping in to these iron oxide deposits in order to excavate these chambers. And you can see it runs all the way up and back into- Yeah, a big chunk like, of iron. Like a bar of iron in the wall right there. All right, and just a quick reminder that if you want to get to know me and my beautiful wife, Alexa, a bit better, I highly recommend subscribing to Let's Go with Lex and G so you can join us on our adventures across the world with fantastic content like food reviews from our 2023 research expedition to England and Ireland, pizza reviews like this episode that was filmed right after I finished recording the epic Danny Jones podcast appearance. You don't want to miss this one. It was amazing. 
a full tour of the new Grand Egyptian Museum, nightlife along the Nile River in Egypt, and all of our most recent content from Japan, including Tokyo Adventures, Gyoza in Harajuku, the spectacular Kombini Sando Battle, and a whole lot more, including ancient temples and other structures not specifically related to physics and chemistry technology. So come join us on Let's Go with Lex and G. I'll put a link in the video description below, and I hope to see you all there. All right, now, as I was preparing for episode 149, I reread the paper by the Synthetic Aperture Radar team entitled Synthetic Aperture Radar Doppler Tomography Detects Undiscovered High Resolution Internal Structures of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I realized that I had missed something of monumental significance, which is exactly what I had always suspected to be the case. Not a tiny pile of bedrock at the core of the Great Pyramid, but what looks like a relatively large hill. And this entire hill is the origin point of this metal mineral vein network branching out from the core, revealing what the archaeological investigations of the well shaft could have never proven, that the transition from the bedrock into the limestone masonry actually goes up much higher than the well shaft into the upper body of the pyramid itself. This would certainly make a lot of sense from a construction standpoint, providing a substantial foundation for the pyramid itself. And it is also a brilliant incorporation from a functional standpoint. As discussed in Members Only Episode 14, presenting a variety of electrical experiments involving both the Great Pyramid and a site known as the Avebury Serpent Temple Complex. I explained how the electrically conductive metal ore mineral veins emanating from the core of the Great Pyramid would have facilitated the upward vector directional flow of telluric currents moving into the body of the Great Pyramid, taking the horizontally flowing currents moving through the surface of the Earth and providing them with a conductive pathway in an upward vector trajectory directly into the structure. But remember the hermetic axiom, as above, so below. And the dielectric polarization and electric field concentration at the top of the Great Pyramid, as explained in episode 109, created a target for negatively charged cloud to ground lightning. And the Great Pyramid, with its iron core and vein network, was specifically designed not only to distribute that high voltage electric current through these conductive mineral veins across the Giza Plateau, which has been proven with the silicate microsphere fulgurites that were discovered in the chemical analysis of these mineral deposits, but also these electric currents were concentrated to induce electric fields directly in the area surrounding the king's chamber. As explained in episode 108, presenting this paper, study reveals the Great Pyramid of Giza can focus electromagnetic energy, and those electric fields within the quartz-filled red granite of the sulfur furnace and acoustic catalyst chamber provided the power source for the inverse piezoelectric sonochemical reactions involved in the production of the Great Pyramid product a dilute solution of sulfuric acid, as most recently described in episode 120. Now, all of the pieces are finally coming together. And if you are new to the channel and you want to get caught up, check out both the Giza Iron Vein and Great Pyramid playlist for all of the videos referenced in today's episode. All right, everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video. And please remember to subscribe for more content if you're interested in the technology of ancient civilizations utilizing physics and chemistry and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from around the world. If you want to help support the channel, you can pick up a copy of the Land of Chem book and grab some merch at thelandofchem.com and for access to exclusive content, subscribe to the members only channel now with 19 massive research episodes revealing some of my most groundbreaking discoveries thus far. Links to everything in the video description below. Thank you all so much for the support. Now, back to the video.
All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 150, the function of the Great Pyramid's Iron Core. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in this week's Sunday site visit, we will continue our investigation of the Stone Hexagram electromagnetic energy grid structure system that we recently discovered in Japan. This is an episode you do not want to miss. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. And remember to click that little notification bell so you don't miss out on the new episodes of Premier Twice per week. If you want to help support the channel, check out The Land of Chem members only channel and thelandofchem.com, both linked in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram or on X, my handle is at The Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's episode. I will see you. next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now!